Even if you are new to car audio, it's a no-brainer. Adding a subwoofer to your system increases the bass performance. But from there, things can get confusing. What size subwoofer should you get? What is all this talk about single and dual voice coil in which should you pick? How do you match a subwoofer to an amplifier? How can you compare features between subwoofers and what makes one sub better than another? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. Let's get into this. To get things started, let's talk about subwoofer sizes because I know when we're new to car audio, it is really easy to think, you know, if I wanna get the best performance, I need the biggest subwoofers possible, and that is not always the case. This is because in order for your subwoofer to function properly, it needs the correct internal air volume in the subwoofer enclosure. Now, generally, the larger the subwoofer, the more air volume that you are going to need. And what determines how much air volume you have? The vehicle that you are driving and where you're planning on putting the subwoofer in the vehicle. As an example, if you're planning on putting a subwoofer underneath the back seat of a truck, you're not gonna have a whole lot of air volume there, so you're gonna have to make those considerations when picking your subwoofers. Now, in contrast, if you're using an SUV and you can use the whole cargo area, Yes, now you have a ton of air volume that you can use and you can pick larger subwoofers. So where can you determine how much volume you need for each subwoofer when you're picking them out? Well, the manufacturers usually list this in their specs. Now that's not to say that we have to use that exact volume, but that gives us a good starting point for when we're planning our system. Now to take your measurements in the vehicle and see what amount of volume you have available for the subs is a little bit more complicated. I made a video about that in the past. The other thing you really wanna pay attention to when it comes to subwoofer size is you wanna pay attention to the mounting depth. In other words, the distance from the flange of the subwoofer here to the backside of the motor. This is important because let's say you're using an application like behind the seat in a single cab truck, you might have more than enough air volume for a subwoofer, but you have to make sure that you have enough depth for that subwoofer to fit back behind the seat. So when you're picking out your subwoofer, definitely pay attention to the size. Now we can move on to talking about voice voice coils. Now, if a subwoofer only has a single voice coil, you're only gonna see one pair of connections, a positive and negative. But if you see two pairs of connections, then this is a dual voice coil subwoofer. Now, if you have a single voice coil subwoofer, you would obviously connect the positive and negative. And there is some questions out there from newcomers. If you have a dual voice coil subwoofer, can you get by with only connecting one pair of these connections? And the answer is no. If you have a dual voice coil subwoofer, you must connect both of the connections. So why do they make dual voice coil subwoofers anyway? Doesn't that kind of complicate things? Actually, what this does is it gives us the advantage of having wiring flexibility. So why does having dual voice coils give us wiring flexibility? Well, that's because when we're picking out a subwoofer, we need to make sure that its impedance matches the minimum impedance on our amplifier. Having the two voice coils gives us the wiring flexibility so that if we're using several subwoofers, we can wire them in different ways in order to best match the amplifier. As an example, we might have an amplifier that's only stable down to two ohms. So what this means is that we need to wire a dual four ohm subwoofer in parallel in order to create that two ohm load. The impedance of the subwoofer is definitely something you really wanna pay attention to. It's a little bit more involved to explain all the math in order to determine those calculations, but I do have a really good piece of information for you guys from show sponsor, Crutchfield. Crutchfield is my go-to source for selecting car audio gear because of all the information that they have on their site. First of all, it's really easy to track down all of these different specs for subwoofers that I'm talking about in this video. We can easily pull the manuals for each of the subwoofers that they sell. They always have a nice handy link. And additionally, Crutchfield has a really good database of a bunch of different articles that are really helpful when it comes to figuring things out for car audio. One of those articles makes determining what subwoofers will match your amplifier really, really easy to do. You can see that you can click through like I'm doing here on screen. I'll drop a link for that for you guys down in the video description. A special thanks to Crutchfield for being a monthly channel sponsor. You can learn more about them at the link here on screen and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans. Let's 
let's talk about subwoofer power ratings. Now it's common to see a max power rating along with a continuous or watts RMS power rating. In my opinion, it's not even really worth worrying about that max power number. It really doesn't mean much. The number you wanna focus on is that continuous watts RMS. That's the number that you want to match to your amplifier and the same thing on the amplifier side, pay attention to that continuous watts RMS value, not the max power. That watts RMS value is the power that the subwoofer is designed to handle in the applications that it's designed for. Now, what if we're using multiple subwoofers? Let's say just as an example, we have three subwoofers. They're each rated at 500 watts RMS. What we would do is we just add those values together so we know that we need an amplifier that produces 1500 watts. As a quick side note, there is a myth that underpowering your subs is bad and can blow them, and this is not true at all. If that were the case, literally every time you turn down the volume, the subwoofers would blow because you're limiting the power that is going to them by turning down the volume. So that is a complete myth. Don't pay attention to that. If you did have a subwoofer that was rated at let's say 1200 watts RMS and you were running it on an amplifier that produces 1000 watts, that is not going to blow the subwoofer. What can damage the subwoofer, however, is incorrectly adjusting the gain on that amplifier. You definitely wanna make sure that you set up your gain and other amplifier settings correctly. So now, what if you wanna start comparing subwoofers to determine which one is best for your application? A good value to start with looking at is called the EBP or efficiency bandwidth product. We need to find that number, and in order to do that, we're going to take the FS, which is the resonant frequency of the subwoofer, and we're going to divide it by the QES of the subwoofer. We take that number, and if that number is around 100 or greater, it tells us that that subwoofer is likely to perform well in a vented application. Now, if that number is around 50 or less, it tells us that that subwoofer is more well suited for a sealed box application. And finally, if that number is between 50 and 100, then that subwoofer can be used in both of those different types of applications. Now, this isn't necessarily a hard rule. There are ways that you can make a subwoofer perform well. Let's say it's a high EBP subwoofer and you wanna use it in a sealed box or vice versa. There are still ways that you can pull that off, but this definitely is a good starting point for comparing different subwoofers, determining what you wanted to use for your application, whether it be sealed or ported. Now from there, we can start to compare all the other subwoofer specs. I went into full detail on this again in another video here on the channel. You can find that video linked down below. So now with the basics in this video, along with those more advanced lessons that I mentioned in some of the other videos that I've covered in the past, you're definitely on your way to picking a subwoofer that is perfect for your application. Don't forget that next time you're picking out subwoofers, you can also check out show sponsor Crutchfield at the link here on screen or down in the video description and take advantage of that special offer for car audio fabrication fans. A special thanks to them along with Bryson, Mike Ali, Jared, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. You can catch some of the related videos here on screen and thank you guys for watching.